some people, when I was growing up, they call them uh, blind bottom. <laughs> Maybe some of you heard that name, blind bottom. And uh, sometimes the senior people would say, you act just like blind bottom. You can't see what you're doing. So there was one man healed in Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. His name was Bartimaeus. And uh, Jesus told him to receive his sight, and so he did, and he followed Jesus. In the book of the scripture in Matthew, we find that there were two blind men. And Jesus touched their eyes, and they received their sight, and they followed Jesus. And in the book of Luke, we find that there was one blind man who wanted to receive his sight. Jesus spoke the word. He was healed and followed Jesus. So we find that all three Gospels have in common that the individual or individuals were blind and that Jesus healed them. And after he healed them, they followed Jesus. In other words, they became disciples of Jesus the Christ. And all three healings took place in Jericho just before Palm Sunday. And then, Amen. just before Jesus went into Jerusalem. Now when we read these three synoptic gospels uh, about this account of men being healed of blindness, some people may think that uh, the scriptures are contradictory uh, or that there is an error in the scripture uh, because they're saying, well, they did in Jericho, but they got different accounts of what happened in Jericho. Mm -hmm. But further study reveals that there were about 100,000 people living in Jericho at the time. So it is possible, it is plausible that the scripture outlines three different instances wherein men were healed of their blindness. And we find that physical blindness was not an uncommon occurrence in scripture, but it was a common affliction among people at that time. And it was uh, not uncommon for Jesus to heal people who were afflicted with physical blindness. And many people, many of the folks didn't know any better and they considered that being blind was a curse from God. Amen? Amen? In John chapter 9, Jesus' disciples wanted to know if the blind man that they saw who was blind from birth was that way because the man sinned or maybe his parents sinned. And Jesus said, neither one. The man didn't sin nor did his parents sin. But this man is blind so that the power of God can be revealed, can be made known in him. That's in John chapter 9. And we find in that particular scripture that Jesus made an eye ointment for that blind man who was blind from birth. Jesus made that ointment from some clay from the ground and from some saliva. Amen. And then he anointed the man's eyes, amen? And he told the man to go to the pool called Siloam and wash, and you'll be healed. And so he was, amen? amen. And the folks, the, the church folks was real upset. You remember the scripture? They was, they was not upset, they were mad. Because Jesus healed this man of blindness. This man who had been blind since birth, Jesus healed him on the Sabbath day. And the church folks had a real deal problem with working on the Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. But that didn't stop Jesus from doing Amen. what Jesus does. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah to the king. They grudged this poor man of being healed on the Sabbath day. Now in our foundational scripture today, our focus scripture in the book of Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 37, those are the verses that precede our foundational scripture, we find that 
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Thunder, uh, were uh, talking to Jesus. And they said, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. That's what they told Jesus. And Jesus said to them, what do you want me to do for you? That's a profound question. What do you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and one on your left hand. Huh? In your glory. Mm. But as the word goes forth, Jesus said, whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, Amen. and to give his life a ransom for many. Keep that discourse in mind as we move forward in the word. In Mark's narrative of the gospel concerning blind Barnabas, uh, we find that Jesus is on his way, just as in the other Gospels, to Jerusalem to make his triumphant entry into the city on Palm Sunday. He is on his way to make the ultimate sacrifice on the Roman cross for your sins and my sins and our sins. But first, he needed to go through Jericho. That was easy access into Jerusalem through Jericho. Now Jericho was the same Jericho that blocked Israel's entrance into the promised land. Mm. This was the same town, hallelujah, to the king that uh, Joshua and Israel marched around for seven days. They marched around one time for six days and on the seventh day they marched around seven times and on the seventh time they began to shout. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. And, not, and the only people who were saved in Jericho at that time was the harlot Rahab and those who were with her at her home because they were the ones who hid Joshua's men when they were sent to spy out the land. This is the same Jericho that Joshua cursed. Amen? But Jesus had need to go through Jericho. He had need to be in Jericho at that particular time because there was a blind man Amen. named Barnabas who sat by the road begging. He was a beggar. People who were disabled at that time did not have access to welfare. They did not have access to any disability agencies, but they were at the mercy of the people who were around them, amen? And they had to survive the best way that they could. Although blind Bartimaeus could not see, there was nothing at all wrong with his hearing. And he heard a noise. He heard a commotion that made him wonder what in the world is going on. And they said, Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Now, when Philip told Nathaniel that they had found the Messiah, Nathaniel's response was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Perhaps Nathaniel at that time knew the scripture and knew of no prophecy wherein it was stated that the Messiah would hail from Nazareth. But here, this poor beggar blind man was excited about the man Jesus from the city of Nazareth. 
Hallelujah.